Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Judgment Begins in the House. It is December 20th, 2023, 5784 on the Hebraic calendar. And I'm going to go ahead and get right into this word because it is a word that is a time sensitive word and one uh, for which you must seek the Lord and choose how you will uh, decide in the coming days. Father, we thank you for the ability to be in your presence. We thank you for the gift of Yeshua. We thank you that through him we live and move and have our being. And we ask especially, Lord, that you teach us to order our days. You teach us to obey your word and to hear your voice and to go the way that you direct us. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you protect our families, and we confess that it's by our faith in Yeshua that we are able to stand on your word and decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, let every word cause every word that rises up against us, your children, those who are seeking you with our whole hearts that rises up against us in condemnation, every word of witchcraft, every word of crop failure. Cause it, Father God, we decree those words actually to just uh, be condemned now, condemned, and to not bear any fruit. We praise you and honor you, and I ask you, Lord, to let me not speak a word that's not pleasing to you, and cause every word that you have me speak, accomplish what you're sending it to. We pray these things in the precious name and authority of Yeshua HaMashiach, also known as Jesus. Amen. This word is about Christmas. And I have, I have a word from the Lord about Christmas. Christmas is one of those things that are taboo to speak about negatively in Christian communities, churches. Um, it's one of those things where some of the nicest behaving people become not so nice when they're challenged about it. It's something that I had always celebrated and defended and uh, spoke with my pocketbook when I thought a business or entity was attacking Christmas, I would withhold my money from them. So um, I need to preface this simply by saying that this has been at least a 13 year walk for me that has only in very recent years become more clear. And I believe that um, the Lord, no, it's funny to say I believe, the Lord knew that I was not prepared to share this word from him until this very day. He knew that I did not have a heart of complete surrender and love for him or for you, that I was more fight than I was love. And so he has lovingly walked me through living his direction and the revelation and understanding of what I'm about to share with you so that I have compassion and love and patience for what may be um, a very ugly response. But I will say to everyone listening, you can't cancel me. And you can't cancel the walk that God has for us, any of us. You can't silence the voice of the living God. So let me just get to this word. Last night, um, sitting and praying with the Lord and just considering some of the things that he's having me address 
in other places and behind the scenes regarding Christmas. The Lord said to me very clearly, Christmas versus Hanukkah, teach them. Now, when we hear verses, V-E-R-S-U-S, -S, that's um, that denotes a battle, fight against one, Ali versus Frazier, or a choice, choose this versus that, life versus death. So clearly, Christmas versus Hanukkah, teach them. The Lord is saying that there's a choice. When he says, teach them, I quite frankly said, Lord, because I, I feel unqualified, underqualified, because I'm not a biblical scholar. I'm not a um, historian. That's not what I completed my, my undergrad and graduate degrees in. And I know the weight and responsibility of saying that you're teaching on behalf of the Lord, which is why he very clearly says, be careful calling yourself teacher and taking on the title teacher in my name, because you're going to be held to a higher standard of his judgment when the time comes. So I said, Lord, I need you to tell me what to teach, how to teach. And he began to speak to me in what felt like the same way that he was speaking to Job. In the book of Job, when he, the Lord finally said, <clears throat> as if to say, okay, Job, you and your friends, I'm here. And let's just have this talk with me, the living God, the one you think you know so well and can answer for. This is what it felt like. And so I'm going to share this with you all. And then I'm going to pray us out. And I'm going to give you a final word of, I was about to say instruction, but it's a command. But we'll get to that at the end. The Lord says, what, this is after I asked him to teach me, tell me what to teach. He asked the question, thus says the Lord, was there a shadow, a time of celebrating his birthday or date in the month of December? Now we know that there are many types and shadows of Yeshua, of Jesus in the Old Testament that speak to his birth in the New Testament. There are types and shadows of things that we see even happening today and will happen at the return of Yeshua. And so the Lord says, was there a shadow, a time of celebrating his birth or date in the month of December? So me, I said, well, what about the harvest? I'm not a farmer. I do know that there's very little harvested in December, uh, the winter months, even in the Middle East. But again, I surrender all to the Lord. I am comfortable with being a fool for him. And the Lord said, I'm just gonna hold it up. It, the harvest, is the reaping of what you've sown. Was any such thing sown by man to reap my son, the perfect one? So think about that. Was any such thing sown by man to reap the perfect one, his son? Could we have worked? Could we have done something that warranted our perfect Messiah. Now I can hear some thinking, well, yeah, we sowed sin and that's why he came. No, that's not, that's not sowing and reaping. Um, that has to do with sowing good seed into good ground and reaping a good harvest. There was nothing good that man did. Nothing good that we sowed to reap Yeshua. 
And so the Lord asked that question specifically. Then he went on to say, what about Adam? The first Adam is the day of his birth given in my word. My answer, no, I don't believe that it is. Now I know there are lots of ministries and people who have dedicated their lives to debating the age of the earth and the trying to extrapolate in some way what that might mean for when Adam was born and when Yeshua might return. But the reality is scripturally, there's nothing in the scripture that tells us the birth date of Adam, the first Adam. Then the Lord said, what grain, what crop was sown and harvested in December? What grain, what crop was sown and harvested by my people in December? My people in this context, he's speaking about the people of Israel, the people who were birthed from Jacob, Yaakov. Name it and know. So I'm going to go back because I, I, I broke into that a bit and I want to I want you to hear how the Lord said it to me. What grain, what crop was sown and harvested by my people in December? Name it and know. K-N-O-W. This is when it really felt like that Job encounter with the Lord. Then the Lord went on to say, if Christmas is the celebration of the birth of my son, why do none of the trappings mirror his announcement, his birth, his introduction to Simeon, to Anna, his, my temple? Why do ones that hate me abhor my way, capital W, celebrate this day? Ask yourselves what is hidden in the obvious, signs of my king son or signs of the kingdom that is not my own. You fight for what you do not know rather than for who you say you know. Who do you say I am? The God of Christmas or the God of my son, the one you know not of the day of his coming, his first or his second, the one who is and was and has always been from the beginning, the one having no beginning and no end. Will you hear my voice, says the Lord, hearken your ear to my words and obey. Here's the specific direction for us. And I know the weight of saying that I'm speaking, thus says the Lord. And I am saying, thus says the Lord, to followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, to followers of Jesus, to ones that say we are children of the Most High God. Cease this celebration of excess and of things I hate, says the Lord. For it is not of my house, nor of my heart. I am the Lord. Hear me this day. The days of mixture, my grace toward you mixing the profane with my holy have ended. It is a blot on your heart, your worship, your praise. Put down the old, the vile the contemptible, and take up the new? Would you fight for my feast, the ones you know not of, for your hatred of my people? Would you argue the world for the days I appointed? Would you put down your idols, your traditions, because I've sent ones you know not of into my house to shake off the dross? Whose report will do you believe, says the Lord, who determined your days from the beginning? Now, there's something in here, especially as we are interceding for Israel, the people of Israel. The Lord said, 
Would you fight for my feast, the ones you know not of, for hatred of my people? There are feasts that the Jews observe because Adonai, El Shaddai, Yahweh, Yehovah said that they are to be observed for all ways. That Christians, many of us don't know about them and those that do choose not to know more about them and to observe them because of our disdain for the Jewish people. That must stop because we're grafted in by the Jewish people. The gospel is to the Jew first and then the non-Jew. And here's what the Lord said finally, and this is a specific direction. Tell them I am not amused and will not and will hold each one accountable. And so I asked the Lord for scripture, not because I distrust God, not because I believe that everything about God and who he is is captured in this book, right? Because we even know that scripture teaches us that the things that Yeshua did in his ministry were not all recorded because there were not enough books ever made that could have held them. So our God is bigger than what we have written in this book. His God-breathed word. He's more than this. This is our invitation. This is our guidebook to seek him for more. So I don't ask the Lord for scripture to confirm when he gives me words because um, I think that he's limited to that. I ask because I want to know that I'm hearing from God. And I ask because we have grown comfortable with saying, well, he's got to give it to me in the book. If you say it's from the Lord, you got to give me scripture. So I ask the Lord for scripture because this is a tough word. Many of us, as did I, identified Christmas as so special and unique that we were ready to box people who tried to take Christmas from us or who refused to allow us to say Merry Christmas or who somehow wanted to frighten us from being Christians at Christmas ignorantly. We did those things. And the journey the Lord has had me on for all of these years was peeling back the layers of the aspects of this holiday, this pagan pantheistic holiday, not only that are not of him, but that he hates. It's a culmination of holidays and festivals and pagan rituals that we brought out of Babylon. And he's expecting us, he's commanding us now to put them down. The days of grace for this mixture, he says, are over. But I asked him for scripture. And here's what the Lord said. It's all scripture meaning the word that I just read to you, spoke to you, thus says the Lord. He says, it's all scripture. Tell them to test me by my spirit. And we know that's a reference to 1 John chapter 4, specifically verses 1 through 5. Try the spirit by the spirit. And so I'm sharing this with you all um, on December 20th. I will not debate whether I heard from the Lord. I will not debate how Christian Christmas is or is not. I've walked this with the Lord for the better part of 10 years. And for many who know me, this is the first time they are hearing me say that I no longer celebrate Christmas because it was not my direction to... Um, browbeat or teach them. The Lord was teaching me. He was refining me. He was bringing me into the deeper. And I didn't 
browbeat those around me for continuing to celebrate. But now he's directed me to release this word in part because he knows what's coming and he knows that there are things that we must put off so that we may hear and be in deeper, ever deepening relationship with him. The mixture, the mixture, the syncretism, we must put those things off. And so that's, that's all I have to share tonight. I pray for you all. I pray because this is not an easy thing um, to do in the natural, surrounded by family who won't understand or who will question. It's not an easy thing at all. But is it is the thing that the Lord is saying that he is calling us into um, and that he wants of us. For those who have ears to hear, they will hear. For those who don't, know that I will block every ungodly, hate-filled message. If you are truly a child of the Most High God, rather than trying to browbeat me and make me think that I need to change what thus says the Lord through me, which is a waste of your time, you should really just take a step back and ask the Lord to help you hear from him clearly and to give you the peace with stepping into new things, new wineskin, as he purifies us to become his pure bride. It, it's, it was a challenge. It's not anymore. But in the beginning, it, it brought tears because there was a breaking away of soul ties and emotional things that were a part of my Christian identity. So I don't take this lightly, but neither is our God. When he says, my Lord, whose report will you, do you believe? Tell them I am not amused and will hold each one accountable. Those are words that warrant our taking them and taking him seriously. So God bless you all. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you peace. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you because his grace and his mercy is sufficient in all things. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord for who you are and what you're doing, for how you're preparing us to step into the new. Have your way in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and let nothing by any means harm your people. Amen, amen, and amen.